Time now for sports news and the news at 10 with Charles Aruka. Many thanks, Gimba. And welcome to Sports News. 14-time Grand Slam champion Rafael Nadal has begun legal proceedings against former French cabinet minister Rosalind Bachelot after she alleged that the Spaniard had failed a drugs test. Nadal issued a statement through his agent today saying he had filed a case for defamation against Bachelot in the Paris law courts. Now, the African Table Tennis Federation has confirmed Nigeria, Egypt, Tunisia and Algeria as the continent's flag bearers at the 2016 ITTF World Junior Championship holding in Cape Town, South Africa in November. Egypt and Nigeria will compete in the boys and girls events, while the girls team from Algeria and the boys team from Tunisia will compete at the tournament. Meanwhile, the Disciplinary Committee of the Nigeria Football Federation has adopted all sanctions handed Nigeria Professional League side Giwa FC for failing to appear before the board. Giwa FC were last week ordered to pay 5 million naira in fines following violent conduct by the club's fans in a week 12 fixture against Enugu Rangers. The team was also ordered to play their next three home matches at the Lorraine Township Stadium. And also, Federation Cup champions Aqua United have suspended technical advisor of the club, Maurice Kuriman, following series of poor results in the Nigerian Professional Football League. Chairman of Aqua United Football Club, Paul Bassi, told Channel's Television that the suspension will be for a month, while the technical crew of the club, led by Eri Dokubo, has been handed a three-match ultimatum. The players could also be placed on half salary if they fail to improve on subsequent league games. That's it on Sports News and back to Gimba with the rest of the news at 10. Security advisor to the Burundian Vice President General Athanase Kararuza, his wife and daughter have been shot dead in the capital Bujumbura. Kararuza had been dropping off his daughter at the school when the incident took place. No one has yet claimed responsibility for the attack, but many believe it was the fallout of the country's recent political crisis, during which 400 people were killed. And on entertainment news tonight, Jermaine Jackson of the Jackson 5 fame arrives in Nigeria, where the group will kick off its world tour. Here's Maya Gundele with details. Many thanks. On Entertainment News, member of the legendary Jackson 5 and brother of the late pop singer Michael Jackson, Jermaine Jackson, has arrived in Nigeria to set in motion plans to kick off the world celebratory tour, marking the group's 50th year on stage. The performer, who is best known for his dexterity on the bass guitar, granted an exclusive interview to Channel TV, in which he revealed why Nigeria was chosen as the kickoff point. We we know that Nigeria is probably the, 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 the biggest black country in the world, and we are very proud to be here. And uh, we know that we're going to give some exciting shows, and and um, it's going to be exciting. The Lagos chapter of the Actors Guild of Nigeria stepped away from the lights and cameras for a charitable cause over the weekend. Led by comedian Victor Swagu, the actors marched around the streets of Lagos to advocate for a cleaner environment and in turn reduce the breeding space for Lassa fever. After the long walk, they also facilitated a free health checkup for random individuals in Surulere, Lagos. It appears the Okoye brothers have set aside the differences completely as the music duo P-Square are in South Africa to shoot a video for a yet-to-be-released song. The twins, as well as their elder brother and the former group manager, Jude Okoye, were embroiled in a bitter feud recently owing to disagreements on profit-sharing management, amongst other issues. <laughs> Ivory Coast is set to host an all-night concert this week as a tribute to late Congolese music icon Papa Wemba, who collapsed and died on stage while performing at a music festival in the country early Sunday morning. 
Family members, led by the late singer's widow, Mary Rose, arrived in the Ivory Coast to prepare to repatriate Papa Wemba's body to his homeland, where Culture Minister Banza Makale described his death as a great loss for music. And that's it from me. Many thanks for watching. Let's head back to the main news. In the main news again, six federal government ministers today stormed Lagos for a town hall meeting promising Nigerians growth in key sectors of the nation's economy. And it's World Malaria Day today, and the World Health Organization has been mounting pressure on governments to do more towards eradicating the disease. And that wraps it up on the news.